Hey guys, and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Earlier on this channel, you might have seen my review of the Aorus GTX 1070 gaming box, which provides the power of a fully fledged desktop graphics card to a laptop or other PC through Thunderbolt 3. If you haven't checked out my thoughts on the unit yet, we'll put some links around the place so you can check it out. But my main point in that video was that this external graphics box does have the capability to turn a low power device like an ultra portable into a genuine gaming machine. While the gaming box was capable of playing modern games at good frame rates and detail levels, I did have a few issues with the overall experience. The biggest wasn't due to the gaming box at all, but due to the laptop I connected it to. The Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon I tested with had just an Intel Core i5-7200U inside, a dual core processor slower than the Pentium G4560 we recommend for budget gaming builds. This CPU is simply too slow to keep up with the power of the GTX 1070 in the gaming box, often leading to a CPU bottleneck. The CPU bottleneck caused a few problems. Firstly, I noticed some frame pacing issues in a couple of games like The Witcher 3, which led to consistent stutters despite an average frame rate that pushed well above 50 FPS. In this game, the CPU was consistently pegged at 100% utilization, while the GPU was often underutilized. The CPU bottleneck also appeared to reduce the performance relative to what we normally see from a GTX 1070. Games that would normally be playable at 1440p ultra detail settings on a GTX 1070 were only playable at 1080p on the gaming box due to these bottlenecks. In this video, I'll be exploring the impact of these bottlenecks further and comparing the GTX 1070 gaming box to a true gaming laptop with the GTX 1070 inside. So before I jump into the numbers, let's talk about the test setup. I've put the GTX 1070 gaming box connected to the ThinkPad X1 Carbon through my usual suite of gaming laptop benchmarks and compared it to a number of other laptops I've tested over the last year. I'll primarily be discussing the gaming box up against the ASUS ROG GL502VS, which is a GTX 1070 laptop with a 1080p display and a quad-core Intel Core i7-7700HQ inside. In other words, the CPU is much more powerful, but the GPU is largely the same. You'll see some results from other laptops in the charts as well. I'm going to start by looking at 3DMark's TimeSpy benchmark, which is the most GPU-intensive 3DMark workload. Here we can see an overall score from the GTX 1070 gaming box system that's just 17% higher than a GTX 1060 gaming laptop, but it falls 21% behind the GTX 1070 powered GL502VS. Normally, a GTX 1070 system would be about 48% faster than a GTX 1060 system in TimeSpy, so it's clear the GTX 1070 gaming box is being limited by the slower CPU in the laptop I was testing with. Moving to games now, and starting with some older titles, the Tomb Raider was one of the best performing games on the GTX 1070 gaming box, falling just 2% behind a GTX 1070 laptop. 1% low frame rates couldn't match the GTX 1070, though at 42 FPS we're seeing roughly the same minimum results as a GTX 1060 laptop. However, the gaming box struggled with Metro Last Light, falling 40% behind a GTX 1070 laptop and recording a sub 30 FPS 1% low result. These results place the ultra portable setup below a GTX 1060 laptop in terms of performance, which is a disappointing result here. Bioshock Infinite performance from the gaming box was similar to a GTX 1060 laptop, but fell 24% behind a GTX 1070 laptop. The game was very smooth to play, but unfortunately our capture tools didn't work properly in this title, so I don't have any frame rate data. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is another game where the GTX 1070 gaming box falls closer to GTX 1060 performance, outperforming some 1060 laptops, but falling 24% behind the GL502VS. 1% low data was consistent with the GTX 1060 experience in this title. Grand Theft Auto V is another title where the gaming box sat closer to GTX 1060 laptops again, falling 29% behind the GL502VS. Stuttering and texture streaming issues were present in this game with a 1% low result of 36 FPS, lower than 1060 laptops. Gamework settings really tax the GTX 1070 gaming box playing Batman Arkham Knight, but the game is actually very playable with these settings disabled. In any case, our test uses Gameworks, and here the gaming box is a good 41% slower than the GL502VS. Its minimum FPS results are awful as well, falling around the 23 FPS mark, which is unacceptable. Turn off Gameworks, and this improves massively. 
Rise of the Tomb Raider is a very GPU intensive title at maximum settings, so here we're seeing the gaming box fall closer to GTX 1070 performance than GTX 1060. Here it's 18% slower than our 1070 gaming laptop with a similar reduction in 1% low performance. Move to high detail settings and Rise of the Tomb Raider falls much closer to the GTX 1060 but with poor 1% low results which is disappointing. Deus Ex Mankind Divided is a title where the gaming box performs better than a 1060 laptop in average frame rates but is roughly equivalent when looking at 1% low results. We're looking at a 24% lower average FPS than a GTX 1070 laptop here. Hitman, and this is a big surprise here, actually runs awfully on the gaming box using DirectX 12 and Ultra Details, with a 1% low under 20 FPS, much slower than even a GTX 1060 laptop. The game is pretty much unplayable with these sorts of results unless you use lower quality settings. Civilization 6 is another game that suffers from the CPU bottleneck. The gaming box does achieve an average frame rate above 30 FPS, but its 1% low is sub 30, which is not the case with GTX 1060 laptops. Not a huge surprise here considering even a GTX 1070 laptop isn't much better than a 1060 laptop in terms of minimum frame rates in this game. It's pretty much CPU bottlenecked. Watch Dogs 2 continues the trend of CPU intensive titles and the gaming box struggles at ultra detail settings with a sub 20 FPS 1% low that falls well behind 1060 laptops. The game isn't much more playable at medium quality settings still producing a sub 31% low where GTX 1060 laptops are well into the 40s here. At 1080p you want a true gaming laptop with a GTX 1070 inside to play this game in all its glory. Mass Effect Andromeda is the last title I tested with, and the section I tested with Inside the Tempest is surprisingly demanding. The Ultra Portable struggles to stream data during the run, and as such falls massively behind GTX 1060 laptops with a 1% low in the 20s, while GTX 1060 laptops push this into the 30fps range at ultra detail settings. The experience on actual planets is much better, but the Tempest punishes the slow CPU and limited bandwidth of the setup here. The end result here is that the GTX 1070 gaming box connected to an ultra portable with a dual core CPU mostly acts like a GTX 1060 gaming laptop rather than a more powerful GTX 1070 machine. In some cases, like Watch Dogs 2, the system actually performed significantly worse than a GTX 1060 machine due to the severe CPU bottleneck. And in other titles like Rise of the Tomb Raider, the gaming box was closer to a GTX 1070 system. For those looking to use a Thunderbolt 3 GPU like the Aorus gaming box here with an ultra portable, it's clear that you won't be getting the same experience as an actual GTX 1070 gaming laptop. The ASUS GL502VS was 30 to 50% faster for the most part, and that's almost entirely down to the faster CPU inside actual gaming laptops. Despite the lower performance provided by the gaming box, there are still advantages to using this type of setup with an ultra portable over purchasing a true gaming laptop. Ultra portables, as the name suggests, are far more portable than even the slimmest and lightest gaming laptops available, including Nvidia's new Max-Q stuff. My ThinkPad X1 Carbon is just 1.1 kilograms heavy and 16 millimeters thick, while Max-Q GTX 1070 laptops will be more like 1.9 kilograms heavy and 19 millimeters thick. Those that don't want to carry around the extra bulk of a gaming laptop are better off buying an ultra portable along with an external graphics dock. When you're out and about, you're only carrying around the slim and light laptop, but when you return home to your desk, you can plug the system into an external graphics box to transform it into a gaming machine. There are still some issues to iron out with this sort of thing. I think driver tweaks could improve frame pacing, and of course faster 15 watt CPUs in the future would be nice, but it's a good start for a relatively immature product category. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something from our look at the Aorus GTX 1070 gaming box up against a true GTX 1070 gaming laptop. If you're interested in any of the products we were talking about, you'll find links to that in the description below. Support us on Patreon as always, and I'll catch you in the next one.